I just finished making these curtains for the living room. They're made from this beautiful homespun linen from Ukraine, a hundred years old. Those natural edges and heavy, densely woven fabric. But that heavy fabric needs to soak for a very long time if I'm going to dye it in the indigo. so that the dye will absorb evenly. And the vat hasn't been used for a month, so I need to balance it and get it back to working order. It looks pretty good. There's still a little bit of the metallic sheen and a tiny bit of the flower but it does need adjusting. So I crank up the Coleman stove and put the big five gallon pot onto heat. I want to heat it up to about 120 degrees. And I also want to make this a really strong vat. So I want to add a fair amount of sugar. This is a cup of local honey dissolved in four cups of boiling water. So that's going to sweeten up the vat as well as raise the temperature. Just with adding some of that sugar, the vat's already looking better. And that hot water brought the temperature right up to 120. And I'm going to add quite a bit of my indigo paste. This is my homegrown indigo. One of the things I love about using the indigo paste is I don't have to worry about hydrating the powdered indigo. It's kind of a guessing game with the paste, but it seems like it's much easier to use. So I put a few tablespoonfuls in the little jar. Don't want to waste any of that precious indigo. I water down the paste and I give it a good shake. Pouring the indigo paste in, straight away you can see how the vat's changing already. The color looks much better, and the flower is starting to form. Again, stirring to integrate all of those elements, the indigo and the sugar. Look how quickly it's changed. and all that indigo and sugar is probably going to lower the pH a bit. So I'll add some lime to raise the pH and to bring the vat fully in balance. One thing to notice about the, the lime is that even if you don't have a pH meter, you can tell by how quickly it's absorbed into the vat and that the vat is eager for that lime to be absorbed.
And that's everything. All the elements have been added. The sugar and the indigo and the lime. The oxygen is being reduced and the flower is starting to form. Now it just needs to rest. It's been about an hour and a half and I want to move the vat from the side of the house where it's too sunny and over into a shady spot where I still have access to the water hose. The lime and the cloudiness has settled and the color looks really good. Kind of a dark tea color. And there's that beautiful metallic sheen and the flower. The vat's ready to go. I'm trying this little bit of screen to keep the fabric from touching the bottom where all of that residue of the lime is. I try to wring the fabric out as best as possible. It doesn't hold a lot of water. And I want to not introduce much oxygen into the vat, which is a challenge. I'm trying to keep the bubbles out and get the fabric fully submerged. So I use my indigo stick and the lid and a nice heavy brick. Because the fabric is so heavy, I want to do long soaks. So for each panel, I'm going to let it soak for 30 minutes. They'll be in the vat for 30 minutes. and then they'll oxidize for 30 minutes. I'll alternate the two panels. The first panel has been dipped for three times, and now the second panel is going in for the third dip. And that's all I'll be able to do this afternoon. The color is already looking really good. I know it will lighten after it's been rinsed and washed. And I plan on dyeing it a couple more times tomorrow, but for now I'm really pleased. This is the final dip of the second panel for this afternoon. I'll leave the panels to hang here overnight. And even though that linen has soaked up quite a bit of indigo, there's still a little bit of the flower. And I think it's going to be fine for tomorrow. So this is the next morning. And the pH looks good, 10.4. But I've used up a lot of liquid, so I'm going to pour a full kettle of hot water into the vat to bring the level back up. But not too full, because I don't want it to overflow. That beautiful metallic sheen and the flower it looks really perfect. 
I think it's ready to go again. So the two panels will go in for I think two more dips. It's such a joy to sit here on this beautiful day and contemplate the wonders of indigo and the magical way the blues darken with each dip. And now it's time to put the indigo vat to rest for a while longer. My little screen worked well. And as you can see, the vat looks very different. It's pretty much depleted. I'll give it a good stir and get everything integrated. There's no metallic sheen and no flour. The next time I use the vat, I'll go through the same process again to rebalance it and to make it workable. But for now, it's time to rest.